Hello, everybody, and welcome to One Day Today. We're already on episode 38, and that feels kind of crazy for me. I can't believe that we've had almost 40 episodes so far. Uh, this is, uh, I'm really excited about both our guests we have with us today. Um, we, we've just been on, we've been on a roll ever, ever since we started, you know, in the midst of, of, of the COVID craziness is what I'll call it. Uh, you know, we originally, you know, what this was supposed to be was a live event. And then the world twisted off its access a little bit and we all had to pivot. And this whole stage is a pivot. And I'm so happy that we've kept it going because every time we have people share, it just, I, not only do I learn something, but I, I see, I, I get, I get a greater perspective and I just see the beauty in humanity when we can face our obstacles, face what's in front of us, face our fears, face the scary trials and tribulations, our traumas, our, you know, all the things we're going through and transmute it to something beautiful. And that's really what's so amazing about this space is that, you know, everybody who's shared is just, is a, is sharing their gift, but how they got to that experience of themselves as a gift, how they recognized in themselves their authentic self. And, you know, what, 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 just the, what the beautiful things are up to, despite all the things going on in the world, you know, a lot, like a lot of people, if you listen to the news, you listen to a lot of, a lot of conversations, it's the world's scary and everything's t terrible. And it's, that's the case if we say it, say it is, but if we focus on the beauty that's happening amid, amid or uh, in the midst of, of chaos, that's what, yeah, that's what encourages me. And that's what really opens up a beautiful world and a new era that we're creating. And it's, there's a, to quote Pete Seeger, you know, it's darkest before, it's always darkest before the dawn. And I, I believe that's, you know, that's what we're experiencing in this world is we're seeing, you know, we're seeing darkness, but we're also seeing light. And it's, it's a light that exposes that darkness actually isn't, doesn't exist. It's, it's only the absence of light. And uh, I'm really excited about both our guests. Let me invite and say hello to Matthew, our co-host. Matthew. Hey, brother, man. How's it going today? It's going good. It's, I was telling you earlier, it's, it's been back to back to back. Like, I can't complain, but it's like, I'm uh, I'm like revved up. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Like you've got your schedule completely full, and I have intentionally dropped mine down to almost nothing. Perfect. Um, we got so we got both extremes. So I. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like um, I, I I will be starting to get busy here fairly soon, but. Until then, and it's there's something boiling. Like there's this blind spot that I've been dancing around in my awareness, mm -hmm. and I only know it's there through my own frustration. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I get frustrated with myself whenever I recognize that I am choosing distraction over awareness, and. I've it, it's almost like I've needed this this time to just not to not do anything to to let myself just become more aware of the choices that I'm making when there's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I we all need that period, you know, of not only reflection, just of space. And if we're always focused on doing it's, you know, there's no space to actually be there like we're just busy we're just we're just acting out the motions but we aren't actually you know the space is what allows infinite you know possibilities the space is what allows us to to be aware and the space is what like you can't have noise without silence you can't have things without space and it's like it's the space that where creativity comes from where you know just our recognition and experiences come from is is from the space that we give. So I think it's great that you're you're doing that. I, I think I was there maybe 10 months ago and now I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum where I've never been busier, but it's a balance. I'm still I'm still learning, you know, I'm over committing and when I or or, or burning out. So it's been a dance. And it's but it's a learning process. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> it's good to just look at you all look at all the commitments you have and go, okay, which ones did I choose 
from that deeper intuitive loving place mm -hmm. which ones did i choose just because my mind wanted it mm -hmm. it's living by choice rather than by chance yes very much so well, on that note I'm going to invite our first guest. I'm very excited to have her. We have Jackie Scully with us. Hi, Jackie. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Abram and Matthew. Well, we're just so happy you're so here. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was just going to say, I want to, I'm really excited to have you share. So I'm just going to say, Jackie, the stage is yours. Get, let's, let's get going. Awesome. You're okay with, are you okay with that? Sound good? Absolutely. Well, first of all, when you talk about um, being busy, 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 when I hear from you and see what I see you doing is you're just in action inside of your commitment and it's a really big commitment. And so that's a lot of action. So I'm just requesting that you cut yourself some slack and give yourself a little bit of a break because you're right where you need to be. Um, okay. So my story, so I was uh, raised in a family with five children. My mother had been raised Catholic. My father was Jewish. My mother converted to Judaism in 1954 to marry my dad. And when I was eight years old, I experienced discrimination for the first time. Um, I had gotten a, because we celebrated Christmas and Hanukkah, Passover and Easter, and, and I thought everybody did that. And I had, I was on the playground. It's a Friday, it's, I'm in fifth grade and running around on the playground with a bunch of friends and Nancy asks me, where'd you get the necklace? And I said, I got it from my parents for Christmas. And she said, you can't get things for Christmas. You're Jewish and you're not going to heaven anyway. And I just stood there like totally frozen. I had never experienced that. I didn't understand it. I had no frame of reference for it. Then two days later, I'm at Hebrew school and Mr. Halpern points to the 30 of us students and says, remember, you're the chosen ones. You will never forget. And I felt it was so ominous and it frightened me. And so I, Hebrew school was over, went out leaning against the oak tree, waiting for my mom to pick me up. And it's swirling around in my awareness, like, wait, Nancy doesn't want to be my friend because I'm not going to heaven and I'm Jewish. But then Mr. Halpern says I'm the chosen one, but then what about the Florentinos next door? Why aren't they chosen? Why am I more? And I was profoundly disturbed. And all of a sudden, I can't, without explanation, some breeze just kind of almost blew through me. And I just was taken over by just a pervasive peace. And I just felt and knew and became aware that I'm one with everyone and that the tree was was of God and I'm of God and everyone is of God. And in that moment, I thought that that's why I'm alive is to help people remember because it's, I just knew in that eight year old mind that it's just natural for humans to forget who we are and where we're from and what this life is about. And I also knew in that moment that I wouldn't be coming back to Hebrew school because for me, there was an inherent separation that was being taught and so when i got home my mother said have a seat and i sat down and she said we ran out of money for your tuition we can't send you back to hebrew school and i and i just you know pretended to be upset and then moving forward i joined um cyo christian youth organization uh, cheerleading in middle school and um someone during rehearsal dropped a penny and someone else said Someone else picked it up and they said, what are you, a Jew? And, and a, a friend of mine said, shh, Jackie's Jewish. Well, the next day when I went to cheerleading rehearsal, I was told that I was off the squad. And I said, why? And uh, uh, Shelly said, um, Sister John Marie, the nun who was the head of the president of Blessed Sacrament and the head of the whole organization said, you know, she just, she's not on the squad. So my mother, who had been raised Catholic and almost went into a convent before meeting my father, wrote a letter about hypocrisy and had me deliver it to Sister John Marie in the convent. And she didn't say anything. She just read the letter and said, thank you, you may leave now. And then as an adult, I, 
I was in a, a Bible study and I was really enjoying it because there was a lot of back and forth and sharing of how it all is for each of us. And then someone with a master's in theology who was very conservative Christian joined the Bible study and our very first meeting, she said, I said, well, I said, you know, I don't really agree with that point of view, but I really get over here. And, and she said, well, that's the word. And I said, okay. She said, no, 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 that's the word. And you either believe it or you can't be here. And I said, well, I guess I'm not going to be here then. And so um, what was created from all of this was a song. I started writing songs in 1991 and I wrote a song called Separate Heavens. And the song is about that child that was standing under the tree who, um, who was very upset that people were lost in separation based on their tribal religious affiliation with one another. And that child knew that that was a, a human made separation and not of God. And so the song um, has won some awards through the years. And uh, there's a music video that we created back in April. And uh, that's under the bigger umbrella of something that I have named the Oneness Project that was created in 2014 in a in a program, a landmark program called the Self-Expression Leadership Program. And um, so we've done a lot of interviews, about 150 interviews from people in 10 different countries asking the same basic questions. What matters to you in life? What's important to you? What is your life for? And it was my hypothesis that every that the answers would all be the same, and they were, and they continue to be. Always number one is, well, family and, and love and security and making a difference and leaving something behind. And regardless, I interviewed a, a Muslim imam, a Catholic priest and a rabbi. And this was just, oh gosh, maybe seven months ago. In their conversation, they were enjoying their conversation so much because as they spoke, they came to realize that the foundation of why they lead a congregation of people who want to be closer to God, the foundation was the same. And by the end of the interview, they were inviting one another to preach in each other's congregations. So that was really, really exciting. And then um, a couple of years ago, someone heard Separate Heavens, the song, a filmmaker in Alabama, and he called me and asked me if we could make a movie. And I said, well, sure, anything to get it out there. And so uh, the screenplay was submitted to the Oscar, the Nashville Film Festival last month. And um, it didn't win. It was submitted as a short, a 20 minute short. But I am in conversation with someone at the Nashville Film Festival and she actually just sent me an hour ago an email, a full critique of the, the screenplay with, with some coaching. And so I'm just really excited to keep it going. And, Abram, I met Abram, gosh, maybe a, a year or two ago. And when we, when we sat at the table and Abram started talking about what his life purpose is and what, where he's putting his time and energy, I was, I was elated and shocked and happy. And so I'm just really grateful that, that Abram is moving forward with all of this and just bringing it, I mean, the time is up, time is up. And I believe strongly that COVID-19 has arrived on the planet so that people can start to look within and strangely enough, unite in our isolation. And um, so I think that COVID, you know, separate from the the crisis and people losing their lives and being sick, that's not something that I'm happy about. And I see the whole thing as an opportunity for us to really look within and look at one another and join 
um, in a in a way that we've never necessarily had the opportunity to before now. Um, yeah, so that's what that's what I would that's where I'm at as far as COVID nineteen. Um, and like Abram, I'm just moving forward a day at a time, an action at a time. And Abram, you're inspiring me as I look at your graphic and I'm invited to participate in this in this conversation. I just I'm inspired to look at okay, what's next? What's next? You know, having the screenplay not not win an award is not a failure. Having not submitted it is a failure. Um, so what's next is to look at it and expand it and see what's see what's possible. And um, I've sent some emails out to uh, the Obama Foundation and um, Pass It On and a lot of different organizations that support humanitarian projects that that are committed to closing closing the gap between us across apparent divides such as religion, um, national borders, economic status, gender preference, all of it, all the things that we think have us be separate from one another, they don't at all because when push comes to shove, we're, we're all here to love and be loved to to leave the world a better place than we found it to support our families to to be have some semblance of security and provide the opportunity for security for people we care about and everyone um yeah i'm trying to think of what else i interviewed a world war ii veteran that was a, a a bomber and he was at Normandy and I interviewed him and his wife for about 45 minutes for the oneness project and almost the entire time he was talking about his service he had tears in his eyes he said I was doing my duty he said and I knew fundamentally that to cause harm to another human being regardless of where they live or who's who's directing my behavior he said i knew in my heart that it was the wrong thing to do and he said but that was in direct conflict to serving my country and it was just so i i just felt so much compassion for him and i think that us humans can fall into that trap of separating ourselves from other humans based on an apparent difference. Oh, you have blue eyes, or oh, your hair is dark, or oh, your skin is a different color. You have more money than me, less money than me. You speak a different language. You live in a different country. You're across this border. I'm across that border. You want something I have, I want something you have. You know, all these things that are at the, they are the seeds of the destruction that we've imposed on one another. You know, even, even divorce, even within families. You know, someone thinks differently than me and I think, oh, that gives me a reason to other them. And so my life is about opening my eyes every time they close and which is often and supporting my fellow humans and opening their eyes and just having the freedom of being at peace within and without yeah i think that might be that might be the extent of my share abram Thank you so much for sharing, Jackie, your story and your 
just your your passion for for unity and you know i i can relate with so much i mean yeah. we, we obviously have a lot to relate about as we, since the moment we met we've, we've we've known that but uh just in your story talking about growing up and i i kind of i was talking about some about this with somebody earlier today and you know i you know i i grew up you know my father's jewish um my my mother's you know agnostic uh and i grew i was i, I was raised in secular california and you know i i was never given like you need to, to to pray this or you need to study this like i was never given a requirement in spiritual i i was very much always an outsider even being ethnically Jewish, like I, my dad never said you need to go to you know study the Torah. Like it was like it was basically my parents always like you can figure it out yourself. Like you, you're like they they just they let me have freedom in that, and I'm grateful for that. Um, but my experience in school, like school, like I, although like you know, I know I would you know my, my parents would say or my dad would say you know you're half Jewish ethnically because in, in Jewish culture, if your mother's Jewish, you're Jewish, but if your father's Jewish, you're not. And as someone who's my mother isn't Jewish, but I still had the cultures, the traditions from my father, I would like I was taught to identify as half Jewish, like just growing up in the world. And like and I'd have like <laughs> friends at school and I'm saying, oh, yeah, like I have Jewish friends at school. And it's like, oh, I'd like to like, you know, hang out with my friends who are Jewish. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm half Jewish. And they're like, no, you're not. There's no such thing. And they're like and they're like they would like it. Was, so it was like this thing is like, so I don't belong with the jews they won't i don't they don't accept me not that they were saying like, you're bad but they like my identity it's like i they it was like they owned what my identity was based on their understanding and it was like it, it's interesting because like it's the same like you know i'm also a quarter black but i wasn't ra i wasn't raised around my, my, my the cult i grew up in the suburbs i never really had an experience um you know, around black family members or, you know, or my, my grandfather who was black, he, I met him when I was a baby, but I was never like, so although I have culture of it, like I, I never really was sure where I fit. It's like, well, I'm, I'm like, I'm a Jew, black Italian kid, who <laughs> like doesn't fit in with the Jews, doesn't fit in with the African Americans. Not that like they didn't, I, I was always an other, I was always like between. And I, and I was always like, it felt like a weakness or a, I, I, my experience was, it was, I was different and that was bad and it would reinforce my own my own lens my own paradigm that you're not enough you're not good enough and i would just search at without even knowing that's what i decided from a young age based on my experience that i was reinforcing finding evidence more evidence like that and you know but and then that eventually switched for me what i originally perceived as a weakness now with this one day project and nonprofit, it's like the very thing that that was a weakness has now become a strength in which I am empowered by and enriched by the perspectives of all and just amazing people from different cultures, different backgrounds, different, you know, circumstances. And I, I'm, I'm curious, like, at what point did you see your diversity as a, as a positive force? Well, I, I really think under that tree, I was leaning against the oak tree and I was just so disturbed by the, the conflicting messages I was getting from my Hebrew school teacher, then my Catholic friend. I was so disturbed. And it was, you know, for me, it wasn't like my own mind. It was some kind of a encounter, visit, something. I mean, that breeze that came through me all of a sudden just brought with it just this piece of like, oh, that's why I'm here. Oh, people just forgot. It's it's just people. People forget. We don't know. We don't remember. And oh, cool. Wow. So that's why I'm here. Oh, cool. And then on and off through the years, I forget. I would forget why I'm here. And it would hurt my feelings when I'm kicked off the CYO squad. And it, it would hurt my feelings when I was kicked out of Bible study or when, or when my kids would come, come home from school. And mom, what are we? Well, what do you want to be? What do you mean? Well, what do you what do you mean? What are you? You're human, created by God. That created the yeah, but the people at school, my my friends at school, say that I don't. I'm not a Christian, am I? Well, do you want to be? You know, so that was it. Was there was always the challenge of living in a world that's tribally separated, 
do you belong here or do you belong there? Wait, we'll like you if you belong here, but we won't like you if you, if you belong there or only half belong here because that doesn't mean you belong. So managing my own belief system and understanding and awareness and compassion for fellow humans, it's something I come back to every single day, every day. But I, I knew at eight, I knew at eight, it, it was clear to me like, okay, you know, and it, it wasn't in eight year old's words. Oh, that's why I'm here. But it was just this awareness that was like, it just felt really peaceful. Like, oh, cool. And I didn't choose to be a songwriter. Songs just started coming. And one of the songs that came was called I Belong. And another one's Tell the Truth. And they just came. And I just basically transcribed them. So, and they're all in support of unity. Yeah. That was a, that was a long answer. Sorry, Abram. <laughs> no, thank you for yeah. sharing. It's a curious place we find ourselves in to me. This, these bodies, this world, and such a unique and intriguing situation where like I have experienced myself as this infinitely powerful being. And yet here I am in this tiny little fragile body relying on eating dead things to survive. <laughs> and you know living like having to shelter myself from the weather and and all these like just very unique experiences and it's a bit of a head trip like it seems to me like there's this very deep seated fear of the unknown in humanity and it's something that i've experienced about like for myself um just like not knowing where to go next when I'm traveling or not knowing what the next job is going to be or not knowing where money is going to come from. And it, it, and ultimately that fear seems to boil down to if I don't understand it, can it hurt me or can it kill me? Can it cause me pain or can it kill me? And once I let go of those two cares like wanting to not be in pain and wanting to stay here fear seems to dissipate but it it is like you like you said it's it's a, a very funny thing that happens to us when we come into these bodies that we forget over and over and over again that we are this ultimate powerful thing and um there's like the way I see it now, and this is this, I don't know this, this is just a theory, this is just a model, but um, it's one that has served me well over the last few years is that we are coming here to learn how to love in any situation, like how to be loving in any situation, no matter what pain we're in, no matter what, you know, like, can I be loving during this? Can I be loving during that? And there seems to be interpersonal lessons, interfamily lessons, larger group lessons with friends, anywhere there's a group of people, like it seems like those people come together to learn a particular lesson. And that seems to go all, scale all the way up to cities and countries and even humanity. And so I just like the question I keep coming back to in, in, in this is like, we set up this forgetting of our purpose is what it seems like. And the question, what are we setting ourselves up to learn from this experience? I'm wondering if you could speak to the lessons that you've learned from your experience in forgetting. Are you asking Abram or me? You. Oh. Yeah, I've, uh, it's been a process, a very sometimes grueling and complicated process to, 
Uh, so my human, this person, I have to eat, I have to sleep, I have to drink to feel fulfilled, I have to love and be loved. All those things that have this body be programmed with the design that has it survive. How will I find food next? How will, you know, we don't have that so much in, in this day and age. How will I find love? Am I loved? Is that love? Wait, was that love? So all the things that have this body, this finite body that's made of form, survive. And then that is one aspect of being alive. And then the other is, wow, we are created by this infinite source that so we are created by this infinite source, therefore I am infinite. I am an extension of that source, so I am that source. Within me flows that source. And that, to whom much is given, much is expected, I, I ask all the time, what am I to do with that knowing, with that awareness? Oh shoot, how am I gonna eat, what am I, I'm hungry. Oh, dang, got to go. You know, you're on the phone with the Pope and it's like, oh, dang, my stomach's crawling. I got to go. You know, and so, <laughs> so it's, like, it's just like, and it's for me, it has been about making peace between the survival machine and the infinite source light bearer that I know that I am and that we all have the potential to be. And it's learning to laugh when I hang up on the Pope. I haven't spoken to the Pope, I'm kidding. But when I, you know, when I'm confronted with the limitation of this form, you know, what's really cool, my dad passed away in January and I was his caregiver. And I had a, a session on Monday with a Reiki therapist who's a, basically an energy worker and she has the capacity to kind of communicate with what's on the other side of the curtain and we were talking and she said, hey, can I tell you something? Your dad's with you. And I, said, and I was like, say more. She said, yeah, and he's telling you to relax. He's telling you to relax. I said, and she said, and he's also telling you to tell your son, my son Duncan, who's just a gifted uh, singer, um, actor. He's telling you to tell Duncan, to give Duncan a kick, a boot in the bottom. So, you know, and then I, so I thought to myself, wow, there's not even a limitation of this form because my dad's not in the form anymore and he's shooting the breeze with a Reiki therapist. <laughs> so, you know, I suppose it's all in the world of perception. And if I consider this a limitation, then it's a limitation. So it's, you know, it's every day an opportunity to make peace out there and but primarily in here. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's beautifully said, and I, uh, I I've experienced that myself. You know, it's you know we can we can there could be our internal peace is the source of external peace. Like, it, and it's not. And one thing I've really realized in my in my journey is is in my and and also in just my passion for peace that I've discovered is in my in my at my core is peace is not the same thing as avoiding conflict. It is very much standing in our own inner peace and bringing it to the, an external situation and, and not, you know, not re being reactive, not, you know, not speaking to the fear, speaking to the, to the anger, the resentment. It's maybe you still have those, but it's not, it's, it's keeping the inner peace and, you know, extending it to, to, to outside of our bodies. And I, and I see that's, and then the, and that's kind of what I heard. And I see what you're saying, Jackie. And I'm, I am so happy you're, you're sharing with us today. And I'm, it's been so nice to just, just to hear you share and hear your perspective. This is, I, I hope you'll come back and share with us some more. Okay. We're going to check back with you in a bit, in a little bit after our second guest shares, but uh, just thank you so much. You're such thank an amazing you. human and just, you have such a warm, compassionate soul. So just thank you for sharing with us. Thank you, Abram. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. 
And thank you, everybody who are tuned in with us. Uh, this is this is always an amazing experience for me. And I want to invite you and encourage you to share your gift, share your unique gift, your unique genius. It's something that, I mean, I'm a little bit selfish because I want to experience your gift, but I also want to share your gift with everybody because I know when you do share your gift that we all benefit. We all have something to learn, something to gain from you. And you have something that we don't. And you showing up and playing with us and creating with us and laughing and and just just being with us creates a uh, it creates something that we couldn't uh, that I can't create by myself that nobody can create by it's like it is it is you recognizing the gift that you are and sharing it that we all benefit and that's what this space is for so I want to invite and encourage you to share in this space um, and uh, that's part of what our one day mission is. Our mission is bringing you and me and communities together in joyous celebration, unifying humanity in our diversity to create a better world for us all. And that's that's why we're here. That's what this space is. I'd now like to invite our second guest. We have Tom Kieran. Hey, Tom. We got you muted here. Tom, I think you're muted, brother. Unless you want to do like a mime share. Hey, guys. Can have you, do can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Let's see. There you go. Yeah, here you just fine. Great. Well, I could, you could yeah. imagine with my hands, but I'm just saying it's great to be back. Um, always a powerful energy with one day. Um, uh, Matthew with you and Abram. And then Jackie brings a whole a whole new perspective. It, and what a conversation. I, as, as I... As I was listening, I'm thinking, wow, it's there's a thread there. I was trying to figure out what's the thread here that maybe that I could add to it. And um, and and, you know, sometimes I think we uh, I, I think, you know, I am of the belief that everything is self-inflicted. Right. If, if we're going to suffer, um, we in the end, we do draw that to us somehow, right? And and sometimes it's not intentional, and 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 we can say we didn't. But I I think um, uh, I think you know every it seemed what I wanted to get back to. I think we're here for joy. <laughs> you know, and I I know there's bigger. I know we're all looking for a huge reason mm. to be here, but I do think one of it is to find joy in, in this, in this existence, in this life. I mean, you know, Neville Gardeck calls the body, the human body, the cross that we bear. This is how he translates the Bible, right? That, that that's the cross. You got to feed it. You got to take care of it. it. It decays, it gets old, and then the body dies. But what doesn't die is that ascended being, that, that higher being, that inner being that Abraham Hicks calls it, that's inside you that we have access to all the time, right? But I think what uh, Matthew was getting at and Jackie was getting at is that we, we lose connection to that and we start worrying and we start getting in doubt and fear and all of those things that are related to the cross that we bear, this human body, right? And it felt very, I felt myself getting a little heavy there <laughs> as, as we're going through it. And then as you got back to it, that, that, that divinity inside, that the lightness, came back, you know, and, and we, and, and I think we can always get back to that, right? We, we, it's really what we focus our attention on, you know, and, um, but, uh, but I do think, I do think, well, we're here and uh, Neville Goddard calls it the world of uh, Caesar, no? <laughs> you know? And he goes, hey, you know, because he's quoting, he does a lot of quoting from the Bible, right? You know, Jesus said, what give, what is Caesar, Caesar's, you know, and then, but, as we're here in the world of Caesar, in this physical, you know, God became us so we could become him. I think our purpose is to, to get back to that divinity. It, and that's really along the lines of what you guys were saying in the last half hour or 45 minutes or so, is that it's all, it's really to express that. And, and w whatever way you can, it's to, it's to tap into that creative power, right? And to use it for noble and good purposes, right? You can use it any way you want. And that's where that stuff that we see that's going on right now, that's using 
everybody's using their creative power and whatever, you know, COVID-19, whatever we attracted as a mass consciousness is, it, it probably, and there no doubt is, a higher purpose for that, right? We just don't see it. We can't understand the broader perspective from this level. <laughs> you know, we can say, oh, that darn COVID and, 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 and it, it is true. People are dying and, it, and it's wrecking and it's, it's, uh, it's, go it's going through the economy and people are out of jobs and this is not good, none of that. But there is a broader perspective there that we don't know, that we don't understand. And, um, and so I'm kind of all over the place because that's where that conversation today, I was trying to find my toehold here because it was such a broad topic today. But I think if, if I wanted to sort of get my take on it is that, is that yeah, we're here in these bodies. Wow, what a gift, right? What a gift to be, to be able, you know, God became us so we could become him. And this is why, you know, Abraham Hicks, uh, one of the spiritual teachers says this all the time. The reason, the only reason we really feel bad when we do feel bad, whether it's anger or sadness or grief or fear, the big one, the big one, fear, doubt, any of that is because we're, we're, it's not the way our inner being, our, div, our divine self, our higher self, our spiritual self, our ascended being, that part of us that is, that is, that is the Christ within us, right? That's the Christ within us. Because that inner being doesn't feel any of that. <laughs> that inner being feels joy and love and goodness and all of those things that is our natural inheritance. That is who we are. So whenever we get off track of that, that's when we feel bad, right? That, that because we feel bad because we're not connected to that. Now we can say, uh, well, this is making, I had a bad day or this is making me feel bad or I'm out of a job, that's making me feel bad. I have no money, that's making me feel bad. But that's not it. <laughs> that's, that is definitely a symptom of what's going on. But what's making you feel bad is that you've, you've lost that connection. Because once you get that connection, once you are, get back to that. And it's, and it's a thing that you, you know, it's, it's really waking up, right? I, I, I think Matthew and, and Jackie were talking about, you know, the purpose and so forth. And, and, and I, I think the grand purpose for all of us and how we do that is, is, is individually, right? Because we, we are individuals all connected. So, you know, we're individually expressing it, but we are all that one. I think how we get back to that divinity, how we, how we get back to God because God became us. That's why we're here. And um, is to it. And, and while we're here, I think uh, Neville Gardner calls it the promise that you, the promise of waking up uh, and having the, he's, he had these actual spiritual experiences. This is what he says, right? And he says that we'll all have them. This is how he interprets the Bible. Um, but until that, he says, you can use your creative power. And in, in that divinity, he calls it the law, right? It could be some people call it a small part of it's the law of attraction, but it's that idea that that we are divinity, each one of us and us as a whole. And humanity as a whole, that's God, right? As God became us individualized to, to experience this duality, right? There's no duality where God is, <laughs> right? So so how can you know how perfect it is, how perfect heaven is, if you don't know the opposite? I, there's another spiritual teacher that talks about that. The guy that wrote Conversations with God, um, I'm just said, the name escapes me right now, but it, it will come to me. That, when that book came out, it was groundbreaking, right, in the 1990s, uh, Conversations with God. But the idea that, that, um, uh, that, that it's getting back when we when we when we want to get back the, the whole object is to come God became us so he could experience that duality so so now we know what good and and bad is hot and cold um angry and peaceful right those differences wouldn't exist because we would be in that perfect heavenly perfection but that's why we're here so we can express ourselves and work our way back to that right and and 
and without judgment of others or anything. I, I think, you know, anytime we, you know, I even have to watch myself if, you know, if I so I said, well, that person's not connected and I am. Well, then I'm making a judgment that I'm not connected. <laughs> as soon as I say that, as soon as I start analyzing that and making those judgments, then I'm not connected. So, so we're here to sort of do that. We're here to, 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 to really relish and revel in this, this, this physical existence. I mean, in physicality, we're able to experience all these things. And so when we really do feel really good, the only reason we know what that feels like is because we know what it feels like to feel really bad. And that's an amazing thing, right? We're here to experience that duality. And, and, and as creators, we can create anything we want in this physical plane, right? And uh, we have that power. We have that, you know, we, we are God and God is us. So we have that creative ability. Now it's, it's toned down. It's not quite the creative power you would have if you were pure and back one with God in that divinity. But we have that creative power, right? And uh, we can be, do, or have anything we want. And so, but, but having said that, you know, it doesn't matter when I look at my life and, 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 and to where I've gotten now and, and to how be something wonderful, this, this organization that I, that this message really that I'm trying to spread to the world, like you guys, I, I'm trying to get this message out of goodness, kindness, the divinity inside. Um, before that, I was just bouncing around. I didn't realize that. I thought I had it all under control, right? And I, I'm trying to figure out why is it so hard? You know, and I, and, and I, I've accompl I would accomplish this, I would get this, and I'd still not be happy. Thinking, I got to have more, I got to do this, I, 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 there's something else for me. And the something else was getting that connection, was finding be something wonderful. And through my platform, be something wonderful, finding that divinity inside. And wow, because there's nothing really you have to do. You're not here to, to have to do anything. You're here just to experience that and then and then revel in your connection. So when you're, it's to live in that connection and then attract things that, that are noble and kind and loving um, because anything else is never gonna make you feel good. I don't even care if people say, well, that, that doesn't affect me, it does. Even if it's whatever, if it's not pure love, then yeah, yeah, it's, you're not living in that moment, right? Because all we, you know, it gets down, um, what was it? I, I saw a little thing on Jim Carrey today. He was doing a Golden Globe speech. And they introduced him as the two-time winner, <laughs> Golden Globe winner, Jim Carrey. And he got up there, you know, in Jim Carrey style and said, you know, I'm the two-time Golden Globe winner, Jim Carrey. He goes, and you know, I go to sleep at night dreaming of being the three-time Golden Globe winner, sort of saying, he goes, but yet knowing that even that wouldn't fulfill me or satisfy me. So, so it doesn't matter sort of what we bang around doing. It's what we, it's all getting back to God, right? What would it, it I think Marianne Williamson says this, the one-time presidential candidate, a democratic presidential candidate, um, what would love do? Once you start asking that question in all and any situations, wow, it really clarifies things. It really gives you, it clarifies your purpose, right? Because I know we've been talking about purpose a lot today. And, um, and the purpose shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, once you start making it hard work, once you start making it, once you start bringing in those things of, doubt and fear and oh my god i'm not on my purpose then we lose sight of the real purpose <laughs> so uh so i think we're here yeah we're here to to definitely feel joy we're, we're here to to love i think um jackie said that and i think um matthew added to that and i think abram pointed to that and and but but in within that to get back to that love that is us we're pure love that's we're you know we're liquid love we are 
pure 100% divinity in a physical body. So we're spirit first. And I think that's what, so anything that's coming up, all of that, dis, all of that, any turmoil issues, problems, it's all from disconnection, right? And, and uh, whether it's COVID-19 or economic problems. And um, I think um, Neville Goddard, the, this spiritual teacher from the 1950s and 60s, even the 40s, um, he, he talked a lot about um, his interpretation of the Bible as sin being doubt and fear. Sin being you not being that um, higher ideal, not having the confidence or in the in the the knowing it's really more knowing right confidence on a pure physical level here but knowing on a more spiritual level that that once you decide who you want to be and what you want to be you have all the infinite might and power of god inside you to make that happen he calls he Jesus is divine imagination. And, and I think that's a, a beautiful way of saying it, that whatever we imagine, and, and, and the, he's not the first to say it, right? This has come through the prophets, the seers, the, 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 uh, um, the spiritual teachers from the past, all the ancients talked about the same thing, talked about imagination, thoughts, creating things. It's all in from the inside. Even in the Bible, how many times do they talk about from within or from above, which when, when, when they talk about those two things, they, they're talking about the same thing, right? From above or from within. All of that, that's our grand connection. And so, so how lovely to know that, right? That even if you have a bad day, you know, uh, be still, right? And connect. They, they, they often quote that, in, that's often in the Bible as well. Be still and then you'll know. So... So although I think we can, we can search for a um, purpose and I think all of us have something to contribute, it's our inner being. It's the, cause we're all connected through those inner beings. And I think it's expressing our divinity inside. I think that is our purpose. And, um, and wow, once I get back to that, then any actions that come out of that are usually inspired. And, um, when I'm not in inspired action, it feels like work and it feels like hard work and then yeah, and things aren't flowing. But as soon as I get into that godly flow, wow, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So that's what I, I sort of wanted to share today. I, I, there was a lot there, um, but I think what I really wanna say is that we're just blessed and, and we're all connected by those, that divinity, that inner beings, all of our inner beings are connected. And that is our oneness. Our individuality, that's where we see the differences. But differences are not necessarily bad. It's a good thing that we can express those, but as long as we express those in a loving way. And that's, that's where I'm at today, guys. So let's bring it all together. <laughs> Thank you for that. Really, uh, yeah. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. That, that was awesome. You uh, I, covered I was a lot all of ground. Over the place because the uh, message was so big today. I couldn't quite, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't oh, quite it's big. thread the it the together. But whenever you get back to love, that's the thread. <laughs> that's exactly it. Isn't that it amazing? Is, that love is the always, thread. I mean, once I get back to that, yeah. if I feel like I'm getting off uh, in crazy direction, I go, I'm just going to get back to love. <laughs> and then I find myself getting back on track, you know. And, it's interesting right. that I wanted to share with you guys a quick story. A, a friend of mine, I had just before uh, you called me, Abram, in fact, and I just got a call after that from a friend of mine that does not, she does not like her living situation and just thinks, you know, and I go, and, and was just going off on it because I, I don't know. And I go, well, Lori, I go, just talking about it in that kind of intention, you're not going to get... It, it, she goes, it's not going to change. I go, that's why it's not going to change. <laughs> you know, as I talked to her about this, um, it's, I said, the only way you can change it is from the, it's gonna, it's an inside job. She goes, what do you mean by that? <laughs> I go, it's just, you know, you've got to, she goes, I can't change it. Just thinking about it. 
And I go, oh, <laughs> I go, that's how everything's created. In the it was a long conversation. I go, Leaf, you know what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> this is where Neville Goddard talks about. He goes, if you could imagine on the behalf of the other, I go, I'm going to see if I could tap into that field. But, but isn't that amazing that we feel helpless mm -hmm. that when, when, and that's where how most of, that's how I used to think, well, that's not going to change. How can thinking change it? Where actually that's, that thinking in, in, in our imagination and the God within, that is, and that's what creates everything and changes everything if we want it. So, right. Um, it was. It reminds me of a, the, what you're just saying reminds me of the Henry Ford quote whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Uh, that's a great quote. Is it, see, Henry Ford, I mean, it, it's all there throughout history, right? Throughout yeah. history. Absolutely. And, uh, it's like, it's what every. You know, wise, you know, wise person gener from generations past has always been pointing to is that same universal truth. And it's like, and it's not even separated by ideology. Like even scientists, like Einstein was saying the same thing. It's like, as Jesus, as, as Gandhi, as, I mean, they're all pointing to the exact same experience and it's all, it's all love. And it's, it is the thread. And we get afraid when someone uses a different word to describe that love. And it, like, and it's, it boggles yeah. the mind. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people, there's a, I think Abraham Hicks says there's a lot of baggage with the word God, but I, I like the word. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sort of tied to any real one religion. Um, uh, I, I remember in the 1970s, my older brother uh, came back. He was, I've had a, you know, it's in my book, but anyway, um, it talks about, my older brother who just got back from reform school, he became a born again Christian in the 1970s, right? So, so he, you know, he wore a cross and, and so forth. And, and he, we, we would have Bible studies. And to me, it was electric. I went to that church for the first time. It was my first experience. And everybody, you know, it's the, the praising. And, and it just got inside me that there's something here. I, I didn't necessarily know if it was, if it was the born agains because, because as, as we're all learning, um, you don't have to dunk your head underwater to be born again, right? You're, the, the whole idea, again, is for us to, once we tap into that Christ inside, we, we're born, we're, that's the idea of becoming born again. But I just thought there is something to this. And, and I started, you know, I was only nine or 10, right? And I started praying for things, like finding my jack. <laughs> and I found it. And I was like... I go, this is cool, right? You know, so that, and then I sort of lost it, right? I come from a very dysfunctional and pretty rugged upbringing. And, um, and I lost it for years, guys, years until really, to really getting back. You know, I, I was reading tons of self-help books. I remember Tony Robbins. I remember all these guys and I'm saying, what is it? What's the thread? And then it gets back to the thread is love or God, which I'll proudly say, or Jesus Christ. I mean, all of that is the same. Jehovah. I mean, it's all the, it's all that, it's that, it is that spirit inside that the father, the oneness, right. That, that we're part of. So a great topic today, because it, it was exactly what I was sort of what was coming up. And isn't that always true? You call out of the blue. It's always, <laughs> you don't even have plan it. it just, it always falls into play. I'm, I'm going to bring Jackie back in. Cause it, yeah. it just, uh, this is all connecting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It's a common thread, and we didn't even have to try with you with you two. It just the thread the thread is already there. So great, so great. It's, yeah, it's, it's very it's very comforting and inspiring when something like this happens. And people I haven't met, it's like, yep, I'm up to the same thing. Yep, me too, me too, me too. <laughs> just like, yes. You, get, you know, you get, you just get tired of of banging it out and, and, and rubbing up against doubt and fear, uh, fear and doubt and, and, and negativity gets so tiring. <laughs> you know? Finally, you just want to, you know, there is that point of surrender right? and giving that up and just grabbing love. Right. And boy, what a relief. I think that's the piece that, that Jackie talked about and, right. and, and you talked about it is that once you get, you know, I, but I, you know, I spent a lot of years just sort of wondering, you know, I didn't, you have moments, right? But, but it's supposed to be like that all the time. <laughs> no one told me, right? <laughs> Why? Because, 
because it comes from it only comes from one place right and that's it's within, within right everything comes from everything without is, is from within so yeah once you get inside there you go oh now i get it the exception is the negativity and the pushing against and all that right. stuff right. Right. yeah yeah. There's a question that's coming. It's go. Oh, I wanted to. Well, Jackie, you go ahead. I had a. I had a thought just based on what Tom oh, said. Oh, sure. Well, I wanted to. I wanted to put in the chat here um, the YouTube link to the music video, the Separate Heavens music video that has my son singing. Yeah. So I don't know how to do that without. We're we're gonna you give us the link and we're gonna put it in the chat for you. We're gonna put it in the description of the. Yeah, video. it's actually in YouTube and it's Separate Heavens. And you can find it right on YouTube. Right, but we're gonna put if you provide that, we'll, we'll find that and we're gonna put that on the description for this video here. Um, but uh, so one, one of the thoughts uh, I was just having is just just based on this conversation and what we've been talking about, you know, what so in, in this world, like where, where we are, these you know, infinite divine expressions of the universe within our like that we experience within ourselves, like what does what one do? to an undistinguished ego, undistinguished shadow, undist like the ones that are the most toxic, but aren't even aware that they're toxic. And, th and like that being, because like, this is like the pattern that I see in history is someone throws a stone or one c culture, or one community, one individual throws a stone and then someone else throws a stone back. And then it's essentially, that's war. Is one, you throw a stone, if you throw a stone back, it's war. And like, how, if someone's like throwing stones at you, what is the alternative to, you know, just like, just getting stones thrown at you like because obviously if we're just casting stones at each other that's that is war and there's a, like how does one love when one community or individual is committed to their fear to their to their hatred to their resentment how does how does one respond i have a response if that's okay yeah so um Let's see. I was doing when I was writing the screenplay for Separate Heavens. I was doing some research about the the Islam symbol to make sure that I was using it properly. So I reached out to an organization, an Islamic organization, and started a a chat, an online chat with this person. And I sent. He said, "Please send me the screenplay when it's done." And I sent it, and he. No, it wasn't the screenplay. He asked for the interview. He, he wanted a copy of the interview between the imam, the Muslim imam, the rabbi, and the priest. Sent him the interview. He shared it within his organization, and there were people in the organization that were angry that said that the imam didn't get enough floor time, that the rabbi was hogging the camera. And I had a choice in that moment. I had a choice to say, you know, to justify and all. I said, wow, you know, I'm sorry that it landed like that for you. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't our intention. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Just to let him, to let his communication land in a place of peace within me and be responsible within myself for the reaction, the default reaction that I wanted to say, you don't know what you're talking about. And then, you know, no, no, no. And it was 20 minutes each and blah, blah, blah. No, that was a choice, and it's always a choice between this survival machine and the love that I say that I am. And so he asked me to stay in touch. Wow. Well, how, about, how about you, Tom? What, well, what do you say to I, look, someone who's trying to I think, you? you know, again, it gets back to I don't, I don't think there's anything you, any, Everything that is going to happen is already in the energy, in the vibration before you even do anything. Mm -hmm. so it's not anything you do is, mm -hmm. is, is not going to do it. It's how you feel. It all gets back to that feeling, thoughts, and imagination inside. That's how things get changed. And it was really Neville Goddard and a few others that woke me up to this because all the action that happens after that is just a result of that, right? The, the, that we create through our perception and our thoughts and our, and our feelings and our imagination, we create it all. So, so it, it, it ties in with what Jackie said. You've got to, um, you've, 
there's nothing you can say that will do it. It's not saying it. It's being it, showing that love, feeling that love, imagining them not saying that and saying, hey, this is really, you know, imagining a whole different scenario. And it's amazing. It worked. It, you know, it, it gets back to what I was talking about, that, that woman who was unhappy in her place, right? Nothing is going to change until it changes from within. That's really what I'm getting at. So, so as long as there are, you know, you're not going to, my, my thought is if you're in, if you are actually feeling love, if you are actually imagining wonderful things, imagining outcomes that you want, then you're not going to run up against those other things. Because the, the, there's all, uh, Neville Goddard calls it states. There's a bunch, all this, creation is finished. <laughs> he said, I love this, right? Everything that ever was, is, or will ever be is already done. It's, it, it's, just, it's just us experiencing that portion of it. So each you know, consciousness, all of our consciousness, we experience that portion of it. So the, those that are experiencing negativity or war is because that is in their consciousness, whether they want it to think so or not. So uh, there's no getting around it, right? But the best, and I, and if, if it's war, the weapon <laughs> is love because that, that in, in, in you love imagining peace and stuff, it really is the answer, you know, you would never be able to tell me that back in the 80s when I was, you know, I was in public accounting, I was a CPA. Everything was like physical, everything was about physicality and money and and accomplishment and and measurement and 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 um uh and you know the, the 70s were gone, right? You know, the that that everyone called it the new age and and but it's not, it's who we are. And I so it really is. It really is. A, and, you know, I think, um, um, uh, Abram, what you might even be getting at is if someone's in your face with it, well, if they're in your face with it, it's in your vibration, <laughs> right? As long as you might want it, and we might not even want to admit it, right? But if someone's sort of in my, in my uh, grill <laughs> and in a really negative way, I'm asking myself, how did I bring this on? What has been going on in my imagination, my thoughts, my Christ within? But you can reverse that pretty quickly. And, um, um, and you know, again, we're co-creators as well. So we're just like we're us four co-creating this amazing um, platform today. Um, we're co-creating with others. So it's a, it's, there's a lot of complicated there's a lot of complicated things that still feel complicated, right? When you look at disasters and deaths and you ask why, there's, you don't get the answer on this level that we're at. We don't, there's a broader perspective, right? There's a divine perspective that has all those answers. And so, you know, wars, as long as people keep, keep um, war in that, imagining war, war is gonna continue. As long as people imagine, you know, fighting, fighting is going to continue. Mm. So it's when we start, you know, it's when we just imagine, you know, pure love. Well, that's when we, right. that's when we get back to the, the right. one creator, right? Right. And that's what I was going to say. The opposite is also true. You know, yeah. what, we, what we focus on, what we imagine is the way we, we see the world and is the way we experience the world and the way we show up in the world. And I think that's yeah. That's what you guys are doing, right? You're doing your thing, you know, on that, yeah. you're doing your part. And I hear, and, I'm hearing Tom talk, I'm, I, yeah. a, a thought occurred to me, I can't imagine somebody who re feels really loved waging war. Mm. Right. It's, a, it's an opposite. You can't, you know, I think a lot of spiritual teachers say this, you can't love and fear because anyone who, who likes war is, they're fear-based, right? They live in fear. Um, they can't coexist. So you got to either feel love, real love. I'm talking 100% pure love or fear. You can't, you, it's one or the other. <laughs> so right. either you're in fear or you're in love. And so, and so when I'm in fear and doubt, I know that I'm not in love, right? I know, oh. Yeah. Oh mm. Yeah. So Abram, back to Abram's question, how do you respond if you end up in the line of fire? Well, Someone yep. who's feeling loved is not going to wage war. 
So if you're in the line of fire, send them love. Yes, and, and I'll even go further. You wouldn't even be in the line of fire if you were really expressing love before that, up to that event, right? Well, because I, I hear what you're saying, but I also, on purpose in my life, I have inserted myself into situations where there was conflict so that I could explode the love bomb yeah. in, the, in the conflict area. So yeah. it is like that. I'm, I'm purposely bringing the love to... That's a good thing. So, yeah, that's a good thing. The love bomb. The love bomb is a nice way that's, to say it. That's the name of our band here. We're starting. The, <laughs> the L bomb is a we're the, the, we're the, L -bomb. Right? the love yeah. bomb. I like it. Well, uh, thank you so much, Tom and Jackie, for sharing. Yeah. Just, just creating this wonderful conversation. This has been awesome. I really, I really gained a lot, and I see it as just this conversation is it, it keeps it keeps coming back to this, and I and I see. That, that the thread of love and i think that's so powerful that you know we <laughs> that we i mean that we can share and intentionally create a uh, weave that thread in our in our culture in ourselves in our in our space in every space that we exist in all our communities and just like that's what the function of art is and that's what the function just just who you're being tom and who you're being jackie is just like you are weaving the thread of love and we are all better off. And I just, I really acknowledge the gifts that you are and just that you share with us. And it's just been a real pleasure just to, just to, to share this space with you. So thank you. I really, I'm really grateful for you both to be here. Thank you, Abram. We couldn't, we couldn't have expressed it if you didn't give us the forum to do it. Yeah. Thanks so well, much, guys. It, I, it's, I, it's so much. Love today. It was amazing. Um, yeah. it's, it's really, it's been great. Thank you so much. And like, we could, we couldn't do it without you sharing your love. So it works, it works both yeah. ways. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in with us. Um, this has been a really great conversation. You know, we, we here one day, we want to invite you and encourage you again to share on this stage, share your gift. When you share, I gain Tom gains, Jackie gains, Matthew gains. We all gain by you seeing and sharing the gift that you are. And this is an open invitation. We are a space of love, of compassion, of acceptance. And we want to give you a space to share your gift. We also want to give you a space to be part of this movement. And you sharing your gift and you creating a sandbox with us is how you share your gift and is how we all collaborate and how we create this beautiful new era that we, we see and we focus on and we create for ourselves and future generations. So I, I encourage you, uh, go to the website, onedaymvmt.org. You will find ways to get involved, to share your skills and your, your gifts, but also to share on the stage. And I really appreciate you tuning in with us. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week on Tuesday. Until then, I love you all. Be safe, be well, and have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Take care, everybody.